Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. If you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. All right, let's get started. So we are nearing the end of GIT physiology. Physiology of GIT disorders. We've talked about that of motility, that of secretion. Now, we want to talk about that of digestion and absorption, which are also very important functions of the gastrointestinal tract. Now, um, so we'll take it systematically. You know, we have uh, carbohydrates. You have proteins. And you have lipids, three major classes of the nutrients that are digested and absorbed. Okay, so we're going to look at the thing, the common ones in each of them. Okay, you cannot, of course, exhausting all the disorders here is beyond the scope of physiology. But we just want to touch on the common ones based on our understanding of the normal function and see something that can go wrong so for in the case of carbohydrates there is one very common disorder it's known as lactose lactose intolerance sure lactose is not strange to you you know lactose is a disaccharide okay is composed of um, glucose and galactose. Gives you lactose. Okay? So, lactose intolerance simply means there is a problem with the digestion and absorption of lactose. So, the disaccharide enzyme, or known as disaccharidase, that digests lactose. It's called lactase. Okay? Lactase is the one that breaks lactose down into glucose and galactose that can now be absorbed. These are monosaccharides. Okay? So, lactose intolerance. First of all, lactose is known as milk sugar. Okay? So, it's found this substance lactose is found commonly in milk and other milk products dairy products okay so you have milk you have cheese it's found in cheese then ice cream ice creams yogurt especially yogurt yogurt okay these are things that contain a lot of lactose so, normally in children, it's very rare in children because very as young children, because normally a baby takes milk. So, babies like that, they are born with an abundance of lactase, which helps to digest this milk sugar. But as humans, as we grow older, in fact, human beings, surprisingly, we are the only mammals that still take milk in adulthood. Other animals don't take milk again. They only take milk at that infancy. After they are weaned from milk, they never, you can't see an adult goat or dog sucking, still sucking, trying to, desiring milk. So it's something that is peculiar to only humans. As adults, a lot of people lose some of this lactase. So they have difficulty in digesting lactose, okay? So in Nigeria, it is said that up to 1.5 million cases are reported per year in Nigeria, just to tell you how common it is. But generally, it's more common amongst Blacks, Africans, and Asians, lactose intolerant. So 
the intolerance there is trying to tell you that when you take these things, those who have it, okay, when they take things that contain lactose, they have the inability to digest it. And since lactose cannot be absorbed, it has to be broken down first before it's absorbed. Since it cannot be digested and broken down, so it cannot be absorbed. So it remains in the GIT, the lumen of the GIT. And what happens? It starts exerting an osmotic effect in the GIT. That means it starts drawing water. Okay? That you understand osmosis. So, because it's an osmotic agent, okay, it's a substance, it's concentrated, it drags water. So, one of the key symptoms you find in lactose intolerance is diarrhea because of that excess. A lot of water cannot be reabsorbed more. In fact, it drags water. So, we have diarrhea, okay. Then another thing, when the content of the bowel moves to the large intestine, then bacteria, colonic bacteria, the bacteria that's in the large intestine, you have a lot of bacteria in the large intestine. So they now act on this lactose and break it down into different substances that produce a lot of gas. Okay, so we call that flatulence. A lot of gas, so it distends the large intestine a lot and causes cramps, pain. Okay, so they have abdominal, abdominal cramps. Okay, so diarrhea, flatulence, that's a lot of gas, passing out a lot of gas. Then abdominal, those are common symptoms of, of lactose intolerance. Okay, so that's it. Then, of course, treatment. Avoid these things. Simple. You avoid milk products, dairy products. Don't take so much. You don't really need so much of milk. But because milk and all those things, they have important nutrients. So you can still take them. But there's what we call lactase tablets. Okay, so this artificial enzyme that you take that will now help those people to digest lactose. Okay, there are sometimes there are some milk that have pre-digested lactose in it. Okay, you can take that. So this is how you manage this very common carbohydrate disorder of digestion and absorption. Okay, then proteins. It's not so you don't really have much. Disorders that arise from, they are rare, okay? Disorder of protein digestion and absorption. It's rare. But the common one is known as heart knobs. Heart knobs disease. Okay, another one is cystinura. Cystinura. Okay, this one is mainly, they are, Genetic disorders, actually, okay, autosomal recessive. That means it's something that you need to inherit from your parents. When you learn genetics, you learn autosomal and okay, dominant and sex-related disease. You have the autosomal genes. You have the sex genes. So this one is autosomal recessive, all right. So you need. To inherit from both parents for it to manifest. So it's inability for, for the absorption of neutral amino acid, especially neutral amino acids, especially tryptophan. Okay? So the same thing goes. This one is um, basic. Basic amino acids. You have a problem with dealing with basic amino acids. Okay, they are very rare disorders. So let's not spend time. Then the lipids. Disorder of lipid digestion and absorption. Now remember that lipids, that digestion and absorption is very special. 
it needs by salt, both for the digestion and both for to enable proper absorption. So one of the things that you can have problem with lipid digestion and absorption is when there is a problem with by salt secretion. By salt secretion. Okay, there's reduction in like mm, there's it can be gallstones that can block the secretion. When you have gallstones, can block the secretion of bile salts. So bile salts are not there to enable the digestion of the fats that you have taken. Okay, and also they cannot also be absorbed. So what can result? Sometimes the problem could be lack of pancreatic enzymes, the lipase, okay? So when you have pancreatitis, inflammation of the pan, the problem is coming from the pancreas. So the lipase is not there to digest it. So it could be either ways, okay? Some other things can be problem with the GIT mucosa, inflammation, when there is, we call them inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease okay so those um villa they are inflamed so they cannot absorb lipids very well and they cannot also produce a lot of that those lipases so it can happen basically three things in fact even four i mentioned the fourth one by secretion problem with the pancreas also problem with the intestine itself to absorb then sometimes it could be problem with the kind of fats that you've eaten there. So there are some kinds of fats that we call artificial fats. Artificial fats. Those artificial fats, the lipases that we have in our body cannot digest them. So they go on undigested and also they cannot be absorbed. So what happens? The resultant effect of inability, malabsorption, of lipids is that you have those fats being excreted in these stools. So the stool is fatty, okay, and bulky, full of fat and oil, very oily, bulky stew, stool, okay. So we call it steatoria. 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 Okay, so it's the passing out of fatty, bulky, and foul smelling, foul smelling stools. Okay, they're fatty, oily. You can see the oil there. It's bulky, it's foul smelling because of the effect of. The bacteria colonium on it makes it very small, foul smelling. Okay, so that's what happens, and they are difficult to flush because they are full of fat. They are difficult to flush, so that's what steatoria is all about. As a result of malabsorption of lipids, so of course the treatment is based on the cause. You need to ascertain the cause. Is it based on inability of bisalt secretion? Is it an inflammation of the bowel? Is it because of the kind of fat you are eating? Or is there a problem with the pancreas? You try to do wrong tests to elicit what could be the likely cause and then you treat accordingly. All right? So that is basically what you need to know at this level about the disorders of digestion and absorption. These common ones, especially this lactose, very common. Okay? So that's basically what you need to know. Easy stuff. So I've written a book on gastrointestinal physiology, broken down for you. Some of all these things mentioned, they are there for further reading. And books in all the areas of physiology, seven of them is at the time of this recording. So just check the description box below. you find a link to download the soft copies of the book. Also in the description box is a link to our website where you get to find out more of what we do to make the learning of physiology easy, exciting, and effective. See you in the next video.